Hello and welcome to another episode of CTEX Tips and Tricks. This episode is a continuation of our last where we covered the subject of creating 3D fence diagrams and projecting them to two dimensions. We will now take our output, modify it, and export it as shapefile format so we can bring it into ArcMap. To bring it into ArcMap we need to have the projection be in the XY plane instead of the option we have now shown on the screen from our last episode which is in the XZ plane. When we project to the XY plane we make changes to thin fence and tell it to export in XY and actually I'm also going to turn off this clean fence boundaries because that sometimes causes problems when we have adaptive gridding on which we do in Creek 3D. To go to post samples and tell it to export in XY also. And now you'll notice that our view, which was um, in the XZ plane, is now looking on edge. And if I go switch to a top view, um, our model is as we expect it. So I'm going to delete the axes. And um, we could turn off the legends, but I'm not going to worry about that. And we're going to export what you see on the screen the geology cross-section, the ISO lines of concentration, and our samples and borings as four separate shape files. Now we use the write vector GIS module to write objects to shape files. And shape files are limited to single cell types. So we have surfaces, lines, tubes, and, and spheres, points, actually four different kinds of objects so we need to export them as four separate shape files. So first we'll write out the geologic cross-section. So we're going to give it a, a name and I'm going to write it to a folder I've created called 2D cross-section. So this is our geothin fence. We have to give the SHP suffix because there's several types of formats we support and tell it to go and it's going to write out done. Now we're going to grab the next object, the isolines, give it a new name and go and finally we want to write out the output from post samples number one. We have two blue black output ports the first one is our borings and the second one is our samples or spheres. We're going to take the first port, that is our borings, and the output here will just be a line that defines the center of the tubes. So we'll give that a name and write that out and connect up the spheres. and write that out. Now so we've written out four shape files and if we open up a, a view we see that we have the four separate shape files. Each shape file is a set of three files and so at this point we're ready to open up ArcMap. Alright so I have ArcMap open with a blank project and I want to start adding data. So let's bring in the data in the order we created it, though that's not really important. Bring in the thin fence first. And because our fence, once projected to 2D, sits at an origin 0, 0, defined in the XY plane, it doesn't have a spatial projection. So we'll get this warning, and I'm going to tell it not to warn me in this session again. And when it comes in, ArcGIS, by default, is going to color it a solid color and outline each cell. Now you'll notice that we have adaptively gridded cells. That's why we're seeing these cells that are kind of strange looking and that's that's because we went right through our borings and we had adaptive gridding turned on. So we need to modify the symbology and we'll tell it to find unique values for our material ID 
add all values. It's going to find the five different geologic layers. And I like those colors. They're fine. So let's go ahead and apply those. Um, and the one other thing is we want to get rid of those outlines. So right click and change the properties for all symbols and turn the outline width down to zero. And we can say OK. And we'll get a clean cross section without any of the cell outlines. Next, let's add in the uh, ISO lines. Now, again, they come in monochrome, but they look good. We're going to, uh, again, modify their symbology. And even though there's only 15 unique samples so for total hydrocarbons, um, there are only 15. But there is not a nice color ramp, at least that I love. I like to go back to our default blue to red. And I know there is if I switch over and do graduated colors. So again, I'm going to choose this. And I'm going to tell it to choose um, more than I have. I know I have about 15. I'm going to tell it to choose 20. And it will end up choosing all 15. By default, it's putting red at the, at the low end. And so I'm just going to flip those symbols. Now blue is at the low end of our values, red at the high. And we'll tell it to apply. Make sure we like the way it looks. And I do. And I'll go ahead and accept that. So we're, we're getting close here. Next, let's add in our borings. Again, they're monochrome. We'll open up our symbology. Go to categories, unique values for colors. Add all, and there's just two. And now let's choose the first one. And I'm going to bump this up to make these wider. And I'm going to choose a color that is a light gray. And I'm going to make the other one dark gray and again bump up its width. Let's see what that looks like. And I, and I like the way that looks. It could be a little wider but I think it's going to be fine. So I'm going to accept that. And finally we have one more object, our spheres. And again let's uh, Go ahead and open up the symbology for the spheres. And we're going to use this color ramp for our total hydrocarbons. We're going to give it the 15 breaks, which I believe is the same that we have for our ISO lines. And let's apply that. And that looks okay, except that they're very small. and the ramps flipped. So flip the symbols and edit the properties for all of them and let's make them a lot bigger. So that's four. I'm going to bump them up to eight and see what they look like. That looks good. Alright. So now we've got our spheres and our ISO lines, we've got all the elements of this cross section. And the only thing that's missing that we had before, we have legends here on our table of contents, inherent in uh, um, ArcMap, and we can edit and put our and we can edit and put our material names here if we want to. That's easy to do in ArcMap, but we don't have axes. So if you want those axes, the way to get them is with interval tools. Now if you have interval, we could have just exported the 3D model and we could have read in the data the borings, we could create the 2D cross sections and we could do the whole thing here. But without interval, we can bring in all these shape files, but we still don't have a way to put axes around them. Interval tools, which comes with interval, includes the add grid. And so let's go ahead and add that. 
and wow that comes in real quick and once again we can see that because we're in the XY plane and we knew we created this with five times vertical scaling this doesn't show my vertical scaling correctly but if we open up properties of, of, of our grid then for the y-axis we can tell it that the axis scale is 5 and apply that and boom it fixes this so um, and our y coordinate is really not y, it's really elevation. And z. Um, and I'm going to change some of these. I'm going to move that title offset down. And uh, move these over. And let's try that. That looks much better. And there we are. We have our 2D cross section in ArcMap with properly labeled axes. We have ISO lines. If we zoom in, they're nice and labeled. So we have all the features that we want in our 2D cross section exported from MVS, imported into ArcMap. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video.